Hi everyone, this is Josh with Josh Wright Piano TV. Today's episode is completely different than usual. As you'll notice, I'm in a t-shirt and shorts. And today is all about overcoming eczema, something that uh, has been a huge burden in my life and I hope it can help some of you out there. I'm gonna go over some of my top practices and products that I used during my withdrawal from steroid creams which is absolute hell on earth to go through. Uh, when you go through topical steroid withdrawal, what happens is your body has been um, weakened in many aspects because of the steroids being put on your skin. It weakens your immune system. Basically, the steroids are doing the job that your body should be doing um, due to either environmental factors, uh, dietary factors, or something else. And in my case, it was just an addiction to the steroid creams. My skin would get itchy after one or two days of not using those creams. So I'm going to tell you about my journey through this and go over some of the, the top things that I did to overcome it. The first thing that I want to share with each of you is, first of all, how good my skin looks right now. Um, you can see that I don't have any rashes on my legs or arms or face or neck or anything like that. And that might seem like an ordinary thing for most people, but for those of you who have dealt with eczema your whole life, you'll know what a struggle it has been. And in my studies, I've probably done over 200 hours of studying, and I've probably spent like five to $10,000 trying to find answers. I've seen homeopathic doctors, I've seen Western medicine doctors, Eastern medicine doctors, I've done acupuncture, all sorts of, um, I even did NAET, which is kind of this alternate form of getting rid of skin allergies and different allergies, and nothing really worked for me until I quit the steroids. And basically my body was dependent on those, and it was the, uh, physically the hardest thing I've ever had to go through. A lot of people that don't have eczema just think, oh, how hard could it be? It's just itchy skin. But when you are scratching and scratching and scratching and you cannot stop and uh, until it starts bleeding, until the pain overcomes the itchiness, um, it's just like you feel like your body's being eaten alive. And so I wanna give each of you who are struggling this with this uh, condition, often referred to as TSW, um, some hope and some of my favorite things that I used. Uh, the first thing is I would recommend trying to shower every two to three days. You can use a washcloth or a sponge uh, to maintain good hygiene, but try not to get your whole body wet every single day because it can really lead to drying out the skin. And when I do shower, I use this. Uh, this was recommended to me by a dermatologist. I tried all the natural stuff first. I tried like the Castile soaps and like all these natural things that have no chemical ingredients and none of those work They actually made my skin much worse um, This is the only thing that's ever worked for me and I don't have any dandruff anymore either when I was younger I used to have really itchy scalp um, and uh, This this is called free and clear shampoo by the way all the products that I mentioned today are going to be linked in the uh, Description below in case you want to do that and also link the full uh, written out article to my blog down below So I use that and I use this as a body wash and a shampoo um, The second thing is this uh, these are dead sea salts. They're called Minera m-i-n-e-r-a again. I'll link that down below basically I put um, I'm a pretty big guy and I uh, fill the hat the tub about three quarters of the way full I put three to four cups of that in, according to how severe the itching was, and then I just soak in there for 10 to 20 minutes. Um, I personally, uh, a lot of people will really rag on hot water and say, oh, it's the worst thing, it dries out the skin, and it does. But what I would do is I would bathe in pretty hot water with this, and then I would shower off with ice cold water afterwards. And that hot cold therapy, coupled with all of the good minerals in that dead sea salt, uh, really helped my skin to alleviate a lot of the itching. That hot cold therapy is also really good if you have like a little itchy spot. Like a lot of times the insides of my legs would get really itchy, especially in the later stages of my recovery. And so I would get in the shower and I'd turn it as hot as I could to where I was almost, it sounds horrible, but when you're scratching it and you're cutting your skin from scratching it, <laughs> nothing is uh, <laughs> really out of the, out of, um, how would you say it? Basically, there's no options you're not willing to try at that point because it's like torturous. So I would just get it really hot water and then really ice cold water and then really hot and really ice cold. Um, if you have like a little removable shower head, it's much easier to do that. 
Um, the third thing that I wanted to go over is this vitamin B12 cream. Since you're, if you are doing the hot cold therapy, um, it can dry out the skin a lot uh, because of the water. And so I would put this on. This is the only thing that didn't really bug my skin. I used to use Vaseline a lot. Um, I used uh, all sorts of creams and potions and everything. And this is the only thing that ever worked for me. There is another product I'll mention and I'll link it below. It's called Pseudocreme. Um, I joined a couple of eczema forums on Facebook uh, just to get other people's suggestions. And I actually had to quit those groups because it was so depressing um, to hear people talking about depression and almost like suicide um, because they felt their body was being completely eaten alive. So I personally had to leave those groups, but while I was in uh, those groups for maybe a month or two at the height of my suffering, searching for more answers, Pseudocreme is this, I believe it's Irish uh, cream that you can can buy for very cheap online and just have it shipped to your house. My little brother's boy had eczema really bad and still struggles with it a little, but once he started doing the sea salt baths and then he would put, for him, baby magic lotion, um, which is like crappy stuff, but it, you gotta find what works for you. They would put that on after they dried them off, they put some lotion on, and then they put the pseudo creme on, which is this really thick zinc cream. That really helped them a lot. So try out all these things and try them for a few days, because sometimes if you're in a bad flare and then you're good, different products will react differently. So give it enough time to try it out to see if it helps. The next thing I wanted to go over is just laundry detergent. A lot of people use Tide or Downy. I since I was a little boy, I've used all free. Um, I know it's not the purest. I've used the pure stuff like seventh generation and other uh, all natural soap brands and those actually made my skin much worse. So that's one thing that can really help as well is switching your laundry detergents. Um, so far as supplements go, I have just two recommendations. I tried um, probably over 50 different supplements. I always like to take vitamin D as is, maybe 5,000 IU or units per day. Um, I also really like to lay out in the sun uh, for maybe 10 minutes a day or so when I was, at, especially at the height of my suffering. Sometimes when I would sweat in the sun, it would make me a little more itchy, but I noticed that that exposure uh, to vitamin D, either through the pills when, uh, just the supplements uh, during the winter time when I couldn't lay out or during the summer when I could lay out, that vitamin D really did seem to help a lot. Um, the two supplements besides vitamin D that I wanted to go over are calcium D glucurate. Uh, that helps to, re um, get rid of excess hormones, uh, steroid hormones and toxins in your body. And I did actually notice a difference when I started taking that. Most of my supplements, I can tell you with certainty, I didn't notice any difference. And I spent so much money on those and saw so many different doctors and uh, none of that worked for me. The calcium D glucurate did and then the L-glutamine, this is so inexpensive. This is like $20 for a pound of it on Amazon. Um, and I would just mix like a tablespoon of that into my into a glass of water at night. The other thing that I did was I got the Bob's Red Mill baking soda. Um, just get like a pure version of baking soda if you're gonna do this and be very careful because baking soda is not something you wanna mess around with um, in large quantities because it can make your body too alkaline. But uh, I would mix a teaspoon of baking soda in a glass of water with the L-glutamine L-glutamine each night. And the nights that I didn't do that, I noticed I was a lot more itchy. And the nights I did put that baking soda in, I don't know if it was just making my body more alkaline. I was just trying it out based on one of those Facebook group suggestions. They said it really helped their eczema and it did help mine as well. Um, finally, two more things. Maintaining your body temperature when you're going through eczema or steroid withdrawal, which causes it, it's steroid induced eczema, Maintaining body temperature is really key. So try to avoid excess sweating. Um, so if you're doing workouts, I usually like to do like heavier weight workouts um, and not so much cardio where I get really sweaty because that can cause a lot more itching, the sweat, uh, the salt in the sweat glands. And um, I also like to keep my house at like 72 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, while I was going through this and at night I would sleep with a breathable blanket like just like almost like a mesh type blanket um, because that allowed my body to not excess sweat as well I noticed when I used heavier blankets and I'd get sweaty I would just be itching all night long and it was just horrible the final thing and probably the most important thing um, even though I noticed effectiveness with this on and off but is cleaning up your diet I actually lost right now I weigh about maybe 185, 190. Um, and that's what I weighed when I started 
this eczema withdrawal process and I dropped all the way down to 170 um, and I'll, I just cut out all sugars, all uh, every type of junk food that I could think of, uh, I cut out. I started eating more oils in my diet, more good fats, um, trying to cut out grains. I went gluten-free, soy-free, sugar-free, dairy-free. And the big ones for me, uh, staying away from dairy and then excess sugars. I noticed as I started to heal more, I could eat more sugar, which is not good for anybody is eating excess sugar. But um, I felt really weak. Uh, I lost about 20 pounds. I got down to around 170, maybe even lower than that. And as I started to um, work out more and eat more protein and fats, I did gain more weight back, um, probably more in muscle, but uh, that's something to really consider too. Don't go crazy though, uh, just a little personal disclaimer. I felt so depressed a lot of times. I'm like, I can't eat anything, my body's killing itself. I'm tired, I have to go lay down because my body's just exhausted. So if you need to cheat every once in a while, don't don't refrain from doing that because keeping a good attitude through this is really key as well. So I hope these uh, suggestions will help somebody out there. Again, this is not about promoting my channel by any means. This is about helping each of you through this most horrendous process. I promised myself I would do a video on this when I was healed and it's been my um, quit date was April 1st, 2016. So it's probably been about 16 months. I noticed that about nine months, I had my baby daughter uh, and things started to get a lot better. And I don't think it's, um, I do think it's partly coincidence, but that distraction of having <laughs> a newborn baby that you're caring for did certainly help. Also keeping busy with uh, things like my piano practice and teaching really did help me a lot as well. Um, but I, I noticed around eight, nine months, uh, I started feeling better. And then about I, at my year mark, I was, basically better, just a couple little rashes on the insides of my legs, but those only come and go now maybe every one or two months, and they only last a couple of days now, and that's really, and maybe a little bit on my back, um, just a couple little rashes, maybe about that big or so, and then they go away after a couple of days, so it does get better. So. Don't give in and go back to the steroids um, unless it is truly life-threatening, uh, but I've noticed that Western docs seem to prescribe steroids for like everything, and that's actually the root of my problem. When I finally quit the steroids, it wasn't the dairy that was making my skin bad only. It wasn't um, you know certain detergents or whatever. It was indeed the steroids that were causing all of the um, crisis in my body. So. Again, this is just from me to each of you who are struggling with this. I truly do hope it helps. Um, if you have any questions, my email is josh at joshwrightpiano.com. Uh, I've linked all of the products below. And if you'd like to see more piano videos and see me play, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. So if any of you um, have any questions, again, email me. Have a great week. Good luck. Happy healing.